All right. <clears throat> Are we all prepared? Real quick question. All am I doing, right. am I wearing too much Porsche? <laughs> Wait, should, Mental's should I gonna take say, some of it off? <laughs> Mental's going to say that, that I invalidate your question. There's no such thing. So, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 I understand your words. I just, you're not making any sense, man. Well, sometimes this podcast doesn't make sense. Sometimes? Sometimes. <laughs> I'm hearing from people that can't hear the music. So I'm going to turn up a little. There we go. Yeah. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of Lemma Champ or Lucky Track Dog League you run, SCC or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news, and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, and whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy gives us just the tip, we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thank you for coming back to, I am listening to a section of the tax code that allows for business deduction episode of our podcast. It's episode 179. This was the only thing that came up when I searched 179 because there's pages <laughs> and pages and pages of it. So that's why we went with section 179 of the tax code. Uh, if you're not driving a car, make sure you get your bingo card out because you never know what this show is going to bring. Maybe you'll get some bingo. Or, or doing your about, taxes for that matter. Yeah, it's, ta it's almost tax time. So let's what? Like what can we write off of doing this? Like, is there, is there any write off or something stupid you do with your friends? Yes, but we have not created the podcast as a business. Mm. Fact. Uh, in fact, I, and, and I am, I am exploring this because I have started to interview CPAs for my new LLC and yeah, we have to make money to write. Well, we have to attempt to make money to start writing. Can we off. do that? We try yeah. people just don't sponsor us yet. Exactly. We're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, hey, if you want to sponsor the show hey. and speak to our hundreds of listeners who do amateur endurance racing, find us on all the social medias or yeah, we, email it, us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. We, we are international. We are international. We'll trade for We parts. fell off the Poland um, section. Hi, Nikki. Yes, we moved up in the Polish rank. I was so excited. Did we? I thought we hey. fell off the Polish. We fell off the Czech rank or something like that. I, uh, Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I blame silly nannies. They That's blocked right. us. There. They oh, blocked that us. was right. That was what it was. <laughs> they, yeah. they blocked us. <laughs> uh huh. All right, let's talk about what you're working on. Let I us. keep starting this. Mantle, let's start with you. What have you been working on? Because you're the only exciting what you're working on here. No, that's not true. You just happen to know what Chris and I were working on. Fine. We don't know what Mantle's working on, so go ahead. All right, so my roof is completely naked. Uh, it is down to Woo! very, very questionable sheathing. In fact, when uh, you walk up there, there's just places you don't step because it creaks or cracks a little bit. So that'll be fun. So someone's uh, making a run for some plywood soon. <laughs> exactly. And the, uh, the construction dumpster that uh, showed up at the house is full. And after Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, and even the, the last little bit last night, I got out of bed yesterday and my every muscle in my fiber went, we hate you. We hate you so much. And we're just, we're going to spend the entire day aching and complaining that you did this to us. So it was a- uh, Your body's fight. reminding you that you're 50. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you forget what happened last Saturday? Bone yeah. 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 Mom, mom. Yeah. Um, if you guys remember, you know, back in the early days, we had uh, Bradley Brown on there when he was in the Camden Tub podcast. Well, the other half of that podcast, the Camd part, Cameron Vanderhort, uh, was on Facebook asking if he had any car buddies in the Vegas area. And uh, Sajeev tagged me in it. And so he had found a Roush Stage 1 Mustang, SN95 Mustang, that was selling at a local dealership for just regular Mustang GT price. So he was quite excited because he lives in Ohio and he hadn't seen one without rust forever. And uh, put me in touch with his buddy and the two of uh, we went to, we were going to go car shopping for him and we pulled up as it drove away because someone showed up and wrote him a check because they knew what a deal it was. It was a good wah, deal. Wah. Yeah. Nah, nah. That's like every philosopher and I get an email about. Where's yes. your, where's your um, 
I was gonna say tuba. Um, what's that thing you play drum? <laughs> the the, the, the you, you have been getting up for early habits. <laughs> Thank you. We've done wah wah twice now, so I feel like yeah. we actually need the trumpet. The, yeah, the sad I never trumpet. remember it's there. Ow, I but I, uh, I, I actually end up. So his friend ended up. Obviously, he's a Porsche guy. He uh, he runs the Dur Fascination website. Uh, has made some Porsche films. And actually, th that's his job is he shoots footage and commercials and things like that. And they have an interesting podcast, a daily Monday through Friday podcast called Bid Nerds. And it's only on YouTube, but they go through every car that uh, is it. Well, not every car. They find interesting cars on cars.bids and bring a trailer and the other websites and they talk about them. And uh, so if you're looking for some interesting background noise and then he and I ended up, yeah, meeting at a couple of different coffee places and then meeting up. So I made a new friend this week. So I've, I've enjoyed all of that. Cool. Uh, Chris, well, so let's, yeah, let's, uh, we dive right in here. Yeah, I'm going to actually, I want to hand it off to Jeff, but before I do, my God, Jim, Jim, your hair is so magnificent. <laughs> and, and, and when, when I put the, the picture that Chrissy took on the Insta story, I got like so many responses of uh, everything from Ben Franklin to, uh, you Young know, somewhere, ben Franklin. somewhere awesome. there's an Applebee's in danger. It is, if you haven't seen it on Facebook, it is glorious. So it's, it's actually looks longer because he was looking up. So it's not as long as it looks it's in that picture. It's pretty long. Let's it's pretty it's long. For but I feel like a plus year old dude. It's, it's getting kind is of what long. it is. It is, sure. <laughs> it is all party in the back. That's right. There is no business in the back. Well, nope. uh, as Mental said, we all had a work weekend. So Yay. Chrissy, myself, my brother, Chris, obviously, we got to show up. And every time I show up for a work weekend, I go, holy cow, Chris, you've done a lot of work in the last month and a half that we've been away. <laughs> somebody's got to work on the Z. I he know. Is that's amazing. exactly what he says. He says, well, somebody's got to do it. So I feel like I should defer to Chris because he's really done more work, but I could jump in if you want me to. I don't know. What do you want to do? Good, Jeff, you, because you felt guilty at how much work had been done. You did all the ground monkey work. I, I did ground. Well, we can talk about what we worked on this weekend, at least. Sure. I mean, Chris has done some sure, additional yeah. stuff, so we'll just focus on what we've done. I, we I showed up stuff. and I immediately became ground monkey. So, which means I am the one who dives under the car and does all the dirty stuff down there. And I just say, Ooh, what, before I get up, what else should be done down here? What else should be done down here? So uh, Chrissy had done the headers. You want to talk about the headers? Cause I hung the exhaust. Was yeah, I was going to talk about the header. So I will, well, I guess we just bounced back and forth. Um, yeah. So I uh, had wrapped the headers uh, a couple of week, couple of weeks ago, work weekend that we've had before. Uh, so that had, uh, it, they, I wrapped them with the stuff and the fiberglass stuff. It was, Full of fiberglass and then tack them with uh metal zip tie like tie wraps yeah yeah and I so think, uh so i they think were... they are called zip ties but they're called like header zip ties or something okay they have, they have so they're metal purpose yeah right so i did that and then uh so they were all already tacked and ready to go so we got uh a plus b from our local ceramist <laughs> ceramist <laughs> we've been going ceramist. back and forth the know. three no, of no, us he went corrected back and forth us. it's it's ceramist Ceramist, right? Yeah, so we thought so, but so know. okay. This whatever, whatever. He'll tell us tomorrow what yeah. he is. Um, so the local ceramist uh, gave us A plus B. So you mix A plus B, and you get some fun, funky looking stuff. So I uh, put, painted that two layers on all of them. So they're both headers, and then both um, parts of the sections of each exhaust. And so I did that, and um, yeah. So then we let that dry, and then we installed them. So I helped. Uh, so. Chris installed the headers and then we were doing other projects when he was doing that. And then we got under the car and then Jeff and I hung the exhausts. So that's where he is getting at. And that's the whole part of that project. Yes. So we, we should mention this is the LS swapped 300 ZX sure. that we were working on. Sure. The good, only good, race car good really that you guys, but uh, yes, uh, Bill, if you're listening, apparently that post generated a lot of interest and uh, bring your business cards to pit race. Cause there's going to be a lot. They're already a, a growing market of folks that are interested in uh, buying some A plus B for their headers. Well, and the best part about having a ceramic engineer, ceramist, ceramist, however you say it, uh, who is ready to give you chemicals to coat your headers with, he calls us afterwards and says, do you mind if we do some, some post, uh, post, what did he say? Uh, uh, use discussion. 
Did you like it? Did it dry well? Did it? Did you like the way that it changed color? Would you like a different color? It, if you could do one thing different, how would you like it to be done? And then I was said, oh, it oh my god, great. oh my god, <laughs> I forgot that we I forgot how how pungent it was. So uh, I, I we was playing all- ground monkey, so all of the 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 scent just kind of like seemed. I was losing oxygen. I it was, was down there it was like pretty thick. Whoo! <laughs> thick yeah, everywhere. I, Apparently, I have a jar of A and B coming for a motorcycle project. So this is fascinating. Oh, it's a shame we could have given you an A plus B. Yeah, that's all right. We're saving our other A plus B for the monster. Never mind. We're not doing that. You yeah. can't have our A plus B. No, he can't anyway, have our A plus B. I Jeff, it, Jeff what um, else did you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It didn't smell but, bad in the can, but when you kept using it, it did. So uh, Jeff, Jeff said what it else? was like a, a smooth, smooth kind of high. high. Not like the silver or gold spray paint, paint that you exactly. have but it was the, like the, it was like other colors. purple paint it was it was really good um <laughs> i will not live shiny and chrome eternal but it's all good man all good. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was it was a lot out of the sunshine baby uh so anyway so oh, i should God. say that we are we mentioned a couple of weeks ago but you probably forgotten because why would you pay attention to such things that we broke the studs in the install of the oil pan so i or spent, afterward who knows yeah yeah so I spent a decent amount of time. We torqued them right. We are not, we know how to use a torque wrench. Um, not, so anyways, not good, good and tight. Yeah. So no, Chris, I think, that. how many did you drill out? Two. Two. And I drilled out the third one, but I drilled out the one that the drill bit wouldn't reach. So like I had to snake the drill between the bell housing and the oil pan and press, but don't press. It was, it was a hell of a time and it took and your time. parents said all those years playing operation were a waste. That's right. That's right. But we took care of that. Uh, let me see what else did we do. We did front end work. Um, I built the what did I call it, Chrissy? The El Surfer Surferino. El Surf Bordo. El, El Surf Bordo. Bordo. That was it. The El Surf Bordo. So I I basically uh, had a big sheet of uh, aluminium and uh, built the built the the part that will make the front bumper. See, because when you buy a 300ZX for $800 from Rednecks with few teeth and a court case coming up, so they really prefer cash, the front bumper is not going to be attached right. So I had to like bend everything and get all the little screws. I even said, Chrissy, like, go to the bucket of Nissan and get me all the little screws and nuts you can. And and that's what we did. So that was a heck of a time. But the front bumper actually, I think, turned out really, really well. Yeah. And did, did the car come with any kind of under tray whatsoever? I don't think so. No, no, it did no. not. <laughs> no, no, no. Did it come with any kind of real attachment for the front bumper except zip ties? No, no. no Were no, the fenders not. attached well enough to open the doors? No, no. Well, one's half. <laughs> one, one was, side. one was. One side. Yeah. And then, so then I've got a pry bar out. Yeah. Solve that problem. Yeah. So uh, I also should say that uh, I bought a lot of the parts that I bought kind of paid off. Um, I bought a C5 Corvette intake pipe. And like we had no idea because our, our, our throttle body is like right where the hood should be. And then we thought about going like into the grill. And Chris like literally put it up there and he's like, man, it almost fits. I said, flip it over. And we put it on upside down and it is the perfect match. So if you were installing a 4.8 LS into a 300 ZX Z32, get a C5 intake, flip it over. It'll go right in the grill. And it's Good even funnier that the Corvette logo is upside down on it. That just <laughs> makes oh, it look better. That excellent. It's, and, and it, the Corvette that logo. has to be some sort of sacrilege where like if anyone comes near you, their jorts turn into khakis or something. Yes, yes. Uh, the best part about it is the logo is right where the hood meets the grill, so it will be exposed no matter what we do. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So Chrissy and Chris, jump in. I kind of like went and did all my stuff. So tell you, say what you did. Well, Chrissy has to go last because she's playing our second favorite game. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I did more wiring. I got the power to the ECU all finally set up, including a killed relay. You did a ton of wiring this weekend. Yeah. Um, So that's all set and got the fuel system working. Actually, it was tough because the GM ECU puts out a positive signal for the fuel pump and the LS or the Nissan fuel pump relay requires a grounding signal from the ECU to make that all work. So I just reverse the polarity of the relay by 
well, I didn't really reverse polarity. I just took one of the positives and I grounded it. And then I sent power down the other wire and just flipped the switch on the coil. And okay, now it yeah. works fine. Um, but all back together and it all takes a little while because we're not just trying to hack it together. We're using like good connectors and <clears throat> putting stuff in the right place and looming yeah. it all together. And we definitely played the connector game for a little while on the front end. I know like... It was like, this should work. No, it's upside down. Yeah. No, this should do this. And then the O2 sensors, it was like, okay, yeah. well, it plugs in backwards. So how do we fix that? So yeah, a lot, a lot of fiddly bits on the wiring. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Um, got the brake lights to work, which they worked, were didn't work before. Also fixed a whole bunch of wires in the fuse box that were just twisted together with tape over them. You know, things that aren't very important <laughs> really at all. <laughs> But uh, repaired a bunch uh, of those things. Uh, we got. I, I spent some time under the dash of the Toyota this weekend, and I'm like, oh god, this is. I mean, wire suck. nuts would have been an improvement because at least then there's plastic. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, and various other assorted things. Can, can I make a motion? Yeah. Uh, we were told in the social medias <laughs> that I ask you if you have a quorum. We um, should. We, we and, should and then not. And Mental's doing this yeah, crazy, exactly. crazy guy, crazy arm man. Whatever, yeah. whatever motion. This motion. Yeah. We were told by some GM expert who's a porculent fellow with, uh, with flip flops who lives in a state where they don't wear masks that we really shouldn't call it an ECU because it's a PCM. Do we care? Well, ours, ours isn't really a PCM because it doesn't control anything but the engine. It doesn't. It could control the transmission, but ours doesn't. So, screw you guys. It's an ECU. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so put that in your mathematical doctorate and shove it. Okay, go on. We're calling it wow. ECU. Just wanted to know. We'll know what it means. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm done. That's pretty much what I did. I'm still gonna work on. It's like tomorrow. I'm gonna go work on more stuff out there. You know, but being home by myself i have to do some other things occasionally as far as i'm just work on the car so like clean and cook and do yeah sorry no, you know, sorry porn that hub kind of wire stuff. porn hub wire, <laughs> wire. what else sure. whatever <laughs> anyway um so i'm sorry I, pet the cat wire pet the dude cat wire. well yeah the cat gets petted all day so there's that um so i helped alone. Right now, so I did the header wire, I told, or header wrapped. I told you about that. I helped Jeff some, um, and then I installed the belts and seats a couple times, which uh, we will talk about a little bit later. <laughs> I put them in once, and then it wasn't right. And then I had to take them all out, and this includes the bolting the seat down all the way, and then you know, realizing it's not right, testing the lengths, so they weren't right. Yes, our favorite so, podcast warned that this would happen. Yes, well, we'll tell you about it later it's going to happen. And it was sad when it did. Um, and then I used, I, so we um, used some CAD on self El Surfordo, but I also made some um, covers for the fog lights. So I did that. And did you saw them? CAD first? being cardboard aided design. We should mention that. That's yes. We talked about it before, but Very um, it should be on the bingo card. That, we we, we should presume be. it means cardboard aided design. Yes. There's new listeners. I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, sure. yes. yes. No, it's a, that's a very fair. I'm, Thank you. That's what we're trying to work on, right? Um, okay. And so also, so as Chris said, he's home by himself. I am. Uh, got to do a little bit of traveling for work. Yay. I have uh, four of six of my training centers up and running. So this one is the fifth. Uh, I am in Den outside of Denver, Colorado. I am um, staying on the west side and my training center is on the east side of Denver. So I have to go all the way around the Beltway every day. Um, but we've been making really good progress because I'm here with two guys that already run. One guy runs a training center and one guy runs all of the facilitators that run the training centers. So they know exactly what needs to be done. So we're rocking through it. We made a lot of progress on Monday and Tuesday. Today, uh, I had meetings in the afternoon that I couldn't cancel. So um, what one of the pictures? No, no, I'm telling Jeff to check his phone. I'm sorry. sorry. Apologize. Um, so, so yeah, so I'm here. Um, it, it was lovely 60 degrees and I was working in a t-shirt and now it is snowing because that's what happens in Colorado. Um, yeah, so I'm out here making a training center. I'll be home on Friday. So since I'm traveling, we have to play the game. Guess the rental. Okay. So I've played have... this game in a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> exactly. the Rona. It's at least it's, a year. Yeah. It's yeah. exactly a year. So we looked right, it can, up. And... Can I review the rules? Sure. Here are the rules for those of you who have not played guess the rental car. When some of us travel and we rent, the person who rented the car must give us a thorough 
two or three sentence review of the car and their experience. And then all of us guess what shit box they are penalized with for the week. For so example, ahead, when I said, I can't believe anyone actually buys this and that the manufacturer is not embarrassed to sell it. <laughs> Nissan That's a very quickly guessed. <laughs> Nissan Altima. Nissan. Yes. yes, everyone, yeah, does. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or if you say literally the worst car, you know, made in America, it's a Dodge Journey. Okay. All right, Chrissy, we're ready. Yes, so here is your, um, here are two items that will help you try to guess. And especially for those who haven't played in the last year, you will know, uh, so I said I'm making a training center. Uh, I have the potential, that's a big word, bolded, potential to buy a lot of stuff. I don't know what it is, uh, but I need to keep it safe and dry. So this is not like the time that I went to Indianapolis when I knew I needed to buy a whole lot of stuff. I was going to transport everything from Lowe's in my car. Uh, this time I got a lot of delivery, but knowing that I was possibly going to have to buy things. Um, also, I shipped, so the site that I'm working at now is a um, unmanned satellite. So it is a person, it, it is a building that doesn't have any people that stay at it. So I was unable to ship anything to this building. I had to ship it to a different building. So there was a possibility that everything I and all these other two guys shipped their stuff, they shipped it to another place. And I was going to have to transport said boxes. Who knows how many? a hundred boxes of, of varying sizes of cabinets and shelving units and whatever. So I didn't know what needed to be done. I didn't know what needed to be brought up. Okay. That's one note. Uh, needed to be safe and dry. I knew a guy was bringing a pickup because he has got, he's got a work truck. So he was bringing a pickup, but you can't leave that outside and it's snowing and you just, you know, can't leave. You don't want to leave like good stuff outside. Also, I've struggled with a space in a sedan before. Oh, well, you got to tell us if you liked it or not. Oh, yeah. I'm going to. Did you, you have like to guess. it? No, but you have, do you okay. like it? Are you enjoying the drive? Yeah, have, oh, I thought I had to get, you have to guess. And then I tell you what I think okay. of it. Our assets uh, ask questions. Yeah, we get to yeah. ask a question. Sure, ask questions. Did, are I'm you, sorry, I forgot how to, how to play is, this is, game before. Is it a pleasant vehicle <laughs> to yes. drive? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, you, you are you are in Colorado in the winter. Ooh, sure. Good most thought. rental cars are going to skew toward the four-wheel drive because of all the people renting them to go skiing. Is, it is that a it did come stuff? with a snow brush. Okay. Is From the this the, uh, what we would consider one of the big three domestic manufacturers? Mm, no, no, not domestic, no. Okay, that throws my guess. All right. Uh, I'm, still, I, I'm still just defaulting to Nissan here. But I'm gonna go with a Nissan SUV ish thing. Hmm, but did it get an infinity? Uh, which rental car company did you get it from? Because that National. can change the Ooh, that can change okay. the, 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 the branding depending on some of them oh, care. Okay. More I didn't more. realize I'll, National. I'll jump, yeah. I'll, I'll jump on the I'll jump on the grenade first. Sure, please. Chris already knows. He doesn't know my review though, so we'll go with that. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Okay. Is it is it, I'm going with some of Jeff's clues. Is it a Nissan Armada? No. Okay. I was going to go Murano because I don't think they do no. the Armadas. It's not a Nissan. Okay. It is All right. better. Than it's better. It's oh, because you said you were worse. enjoying it. A Murano. I am. Or, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, no, so, no, Murano no, is not enjoyable. Or Armada, no, Armada it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I also don't know Other how hits. much I need to bring. So I don't necessarily know. Odyssey. No. Honda doesn't. Honda doesn't do rentals. Honda doesn't provide any of their no, no fleet rentals. sales. Yeah. yeah. No. Toyota right. Sienna. Ooh. No. Okay. You ready? I'm yeah. ready. Okay. Uh, it is a two, 2021 Toyota Highlander. Highlander. Oh, all right. Highlander. Yeah, okay. So I've had an um, a minivan before. It was fine. It was great. I actually was tickled that I put my own refrigerator in the whole thing. And the people that worked at Lowe's were like, yes, I'm going to fit. And I was like, it's going to fit. And it did. Um, but I decided that I don't need to carry a refrigerator this time. So I'm going to go SUV because I didn't want to really carry around nobody in a, they had a suburban uh, uh, Yukon XL. And I was like, I got one of those at home. I don't really want that. So <laughs> I went, so I knew the interior. I think, you know, to uh, Toyota was where I was looking. I was looking at the badge next. So this is an XLE all wheel drive. Uh, it now has 6,000 miles on it. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. Twenty twenty one is the redesign of that. It's for, great. For the, for yeah, it's kind of cool. Yep. It has well, it, it's, miles it's, on it. It, yeah, it's it's on a minivan platform. It's on the Sienna it's platform. A, it's a basically a raised Camry. Is what it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I really like it. So yeah. the interior is lovely. Uh, the, all of the controls are really pretty easy to use. Uh, the steering wheel, the radio, like everything is kind of intuitive and it's not, sometimes the steering, the, um, the radio controls are kind of all over the place and, and just difficult to, um, to, to know. Um, it has the soft text, not leather, but it's still really nice and everything just fit and finish interior looks really, feels really nice to, to be in. Well, um, the, one, the one problem is I can't figure out how to turn off the active assist. Uh, I didn't Google it and I could, but I didn't. Uh, so I don't know how to turn it off. So that's kind of annoying. Um, it's so like not every time over- you leave a lane, it goes like me. It do- it's not overly annoying like that. Like if I say I'm going to bl- put my blinker on and just even if it's just a kind of a blip, some cars kind of like bounce you back and say like, you shouldn't do that and make sure you're, you're safe. And I'm like, this is okay. So um, the also, the other thing is it's, it's pretty peppy. Like it, you can, you can be quick off the line, um, especially in sport mode, which is very easy to get to. It also has all the options for mud and sand, snow and dirt. No. And it's just like right on the center console. Like, so it feels like you want to just make sure that this is like if you oh yeah i just want to do that right now i'm just going to go do it they have um, for someone to start hacking these active assist yeah. to start matching personalities like you know <laughs> sure this, like if you use your turn signal and you're from boston the active assist goes what are you freaking a vic and nah, you know and you just come right over into people's lanes and you yeah. said this is an xle xle yes xle okay. that is a 3.5 liter v6 that's the toyota for corporate v6 i put yeah. in everything which is a great motor so, actually. so i have this is this, this morning i know this is not a good a good pod but i basically had to stuff it full of boxes so it was fine it fit um it's basically like my mazda size like so the hatch is plenty big um so really i would take it if it was lowered and a stick i'd buy it because it's great um, so yeah, no, I, I, I've been having a good time with it and, uh, I mean, that's my, it's review. not an E-class wagon, but what are you going to do? It's not. But, and but again, it's really anything, you know, well, an E-class it's, wagon. it's either a Mercedes or it isn't. Okay. Well, thanks for playing. Sorry for the delay on the Ooh, show. No, that's good. That was now really I've given you my mental. review no, of I, a 2021 yeah. Highlander. I'd forgotten that we used to play that game and, well, uh, at, at the end of March, it was twice a week. Yeah, <laughs> so at the end of uh, March, I got to play it again. And then, uh, and then also we'll be cheating because uh, lemons announced today that both Sonoma, Pittsburgh and, uh, NOLA will be going. So get those applications in folks. I'd like and, to mention uh, that both, and then he listed three. Sorry, both. Uh, and yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm, I mean, I'm going to keep stepping in that hole after I point, after I did that to myself. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I will be ideally, I know I'm working at least two and uh, ideally working all three of those races because I'm itching to see the Z. News! Watch us work on it. It's great. And notes time. <laughs> this is a bit sad, but Bruce Myers, creator of the Myers Manx, it's the car that is known worldwide as the dune buggy it's copied it's replicated for generations he was the original pioneer racing in baja he has passed away at age 94 from my e logisplasia uh, similar to key leukemia it affects the spinal column his wife Minnie said you know it was just his time and for many years she'd been helped operating the business that he founded the company had just changed hands to a uh, trust called the truesdale ventures a link to the auto week article is in our notes but it is worth the read because bruce is a man of many dimensions he was a war hero in world war ii his ship the aircraft carrier bunker hill was hit by two kamikazes when everybody had to jump in the pacific he was a surfer and he noticed the guy next to him didn't have a life jacket so he took off his life jacket gave it to him and then when they jumped into the water there was an injured pilot floating on a piece of debris that he had to pull and swim around piles and of flaming oil and things of that nature so um just good person neat story read the article and uh it's it's a shame but at 94 you got to say that's a life well lived excellent yeah, absolutely yeah. hats off to mr manx plus he made it so people could use uh various throwaway volkswagen pants to jump over stuff which is great did you say pants pants yeah. p-a-n-s that's the bottom of the volkswagen i was like where do you get volkswagen pants okay sorry 
Yeah, and, and, and don't forget, like probably every on Etsy. one of the early they, Kurt Russell. Too. <laughs> yeah. Every one of the early Kurt Russell Disney movies, like the man who wasn't there and the computer that wore tennis shoes, they were always driving around in a Myers Manx buggy. Because you were cool if you had a Dune buggy. Yeah. I, I was gonna say a shout out to Speed Buggy, the cartoon. Right. Hell yeah. Totes. Okay. All right. Who else got something? It's a According to James Gilboy at The Drive, the Netflix docuseries Drive to Survive has done wonders for F1's audience globally, but especially in the United States, where F1 sees a largely untapped potential fan base. Hey, got Chrissy hooked on it. Uh, I feel safe in Me saying too. it's made at least three more fans in this podcast, really. Um, actually, just er today I was talking, or not yes, yesterday, yesterday I was talking to Eric K, 914 lover, and he was saying how he's finishing up season two of it now, and it's making him like look excited for this season. So there we go. There's another one. So uh, the series has been recounting the events of each F1 season since 2018, and it's worth binging because March 19th, season three will premiere. So unprecedented behind the scenes access continues um, and it's going to end with the, with Grosjean's career and, you know, in his lovely little Roman candle that he had there, um, Lewis Hamilton's record tying seventh championship, Perez's first win mm. and uh, Al Alpine Renho, Team principal Cyril, I'm not going to say his last name, his pledge to get a tattoo if Ricardo got a podium, which he did twice. So um, there's going to be stuff on Albon and Verstappen and Gasly's cool win and all that fun stuff. So check it out. That's for 2021. I mean, the, this season, this season last year was pretty decent, I thought. Yeah, I'm pretty excited yes. for the new one because now yes, I have watched was. the racing and then I want to watch the show. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be good. Okay. On that note, as newly minted F1 fans, we are inviting you, our listeners to, uh, to, and viewers to join us on our F1 fantasy league. And it is absolutely free. Head over to fantasygp.com, And the link is in our show notes. Uh, once you build a profile, click join a league, then look for everyone racers league and then enter this code. Now is somebody going to really be writing this down. And if they are driving a car, they should not be writing this down. So hopefully we can put that in the show notes or something. There's a number, an eight digit code, six, one, three, four, five, five, nine, four. Um, so find or ask us for the code, right? So with the uh, test season testing soon, you want to start setting that up. Just like fantasy football, you have a budget, choose your cars and drivers make predictions about other events like podiums, how many safety cars, who get pole, fastest lap and the like. For Bahrain, the season opener, the question will be where, where, where will Sebastian Vettel finish? Set up your team and predictions before the race and watch with us and for the upcoming season we'll be we'll keep the race the league recap on the show and we'll have some of you useless trinket for whoever wins any one our league first race is uh, march 28th at bahrain i think at least three of us are set up i don't know that jeff is in because i think no not yet i'll in. get in there though we're in and we've already gotten and i think there's a couple other people in it already so you should totally yeah. join us because it's going to be amazing awesome I'm excited. Uh, here's some interesting news. The Cherokee Nation is officially asking Jeep to change the name of its Cherokee and Grand Cherokee vehicles. Quote, this is a quote. I'm sure this comes from a place that is well intended, but it does not honor us by having our name plastered on the side of a car. That is Chuck Hoskin Jr., principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. He told us to car and driver. He also said the best way to honor us is to learn about our sovereign government, our role in the country, our history, culture, and language, and have a meaningful dialogue with federally recognized tribes on cultural appropriateness, end quote. According to the Car and Drive art article, Jeep has been building cars that wear the Cherokee Nation's name for more than 45 years. In that time, the company has gone on the record several times defending its decision to use the name of a Native American nation on its cars. Over the past years, since they reintroduced the Cherokee nameplate to the U.S. market in 2013, the Cherokee Nation has gone on the record several times, but has never specifically asked that jeep remove the name from the cars but now they have car and driver article link in the show notes everybody raise your hand if you owned a cherokee that's two two out of four chris and i sorry that's no, <laughs> that was good i actually enjoyed my cherokee until it overheated every day even when it was two degrees out that sounds like a bigger problem than just being hot. I bought but it with 225,000 miles. That's how you sounds buy like a, a Cherokee. Sounds like a general Wakeman problem. Five speed, six <laughs> cylinder. It was awesome. Yeah. Upcoming races. Do we got any? Recent results. 
actually, okay. as we thought so, from the Chris, Chris, you might want to turn on your mic. I don't know. If oh, yeah, sorry. I was going to say, no, actually, we do uh, next week, though, Jeff. Not oh, right now. Next week, yeah. we'll have recent yeah. results. Sorry. Or excuse me, upcoming races we'll have next week. Yep. Uh, we do actually have some ro- results, as we thought from the Rona. The rally has started back. It's rally, uh, our rally resident rally expert, Santiago Iglesias, loaded up his B-body wagon and made the short drive to Michigan's lower peninsula to defend his title. Lucky for us and you, he got us a report. And his email opened up with, what a race. Far and away the sketchiest one I've done. <laughs> That's a great way to describe it. Uh, each said each road was used three times, and by the end of it, it was just sheets of ice. Last year's overall winner described it as the worst experience he's ever had in a rally car. Uh, he later added that the fancy top guys usually still have snow on their stage, where he always has polished ice further down the order, so it worked to his advantage. Uh, we should have mentioned that this is 50? the uh, American Rally Association Snowdrift Pro Rally. Mm-hmm. Go on. Thank you. I had forgot to put that in there. 50 entries, 24 all-wheel drive Subarus. Boring. Boring. Now, two BRZs, which are cool and good. Yeah. 13 Fords, one of them a 302 powered Fox body. Hell <laughs> yeah, brother. <laughs> That's good on the ice. You know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Five VWs, five Mitsubishis, one LS swapped RX-7. And Hell yeah. 500 Arbarth. Abarth, sorry. Abarth, I think. Abarth. Chris, about that. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I did find my screen. Uh, one of those uh, of those 50 cars, only 41 actually finished. Lots of people got stuck, had to wait to get pulled out of the snow before continuing. Of the fancy FIA R5 class, which are the four-wheel drive Fiestas that cost $250,000 each, three of four did not finish. Santiago in- included pictures of all of those. Ouch. Uh, the overall win went to Travis Pastrana and Rihanna and Gelsimino. Uh, Pastrana and Gelsimino pretty much dominate American rounding in case you haven't figured it out. They are a Subaru factory team, but the result that everyone cares about is limited two-wheel drive because we know yeah. people there. The class was won in a BRZ by Santiago and his navigator, RJ Castle. Uh, I hear Santiago did the castle run in under 12 parsecs. Uh, there were a mere 32 minutes behind the overall leader and a full 92 seconds over second in class. That makes three in a row for our iRacing alien and rally correspondent. But the winds might be changing because according to Santiago, there was a 95 escort that was putting down some fast times only to get high centered in the snow on the last stage, apparently two corners from the finish. I'm surprised there is a 95 escort left in Michigan, but it probably doesn't, well, it doesn't mean Michigan. they started in Michigan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they I probably guess. come from somewhere else. I, I say yeah. it, 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 it is probably cleaned thoroughly after every time. If it's the yeah. you know, best way for a 95 okay. escort to go. Well, anyway, Hey, thanks to the race report, Santiago. That's That's good stuff. Congrats. And, and congrats. That's awesome. Yes, congrats. Absolutely. Listener feedback. Thank you. I can't walk away from my mic this time. So I'm glad that you're <laughs> yelling, not me. <laughs> Almost uh, immediately upon posting, the tube was generating feedback. Andrew Pullman re- uh, referenced one of our running jokes, Stellantis, the Mopar, or La Car. It's not. It's- <laughs> I like that. Michael, I, I heard an the- actual professional podcast say Stellantis. If erection lasts more than four hours, please <laughs> yeah, see a doctor. Right? They took that joke from Stole us. it from us. They did. Totally. Michael K. had some additional slider solutions for some of your race seats. Uh, other options for sliders. We were big fans of the TJs. But you mentioned the, the Jeep TJ, Volvo 240. Now, they're harder to find in the pulling parts now, especially up north. Uh, and the passenger slider on the fourth gen F body. And according to him, there are 10 of those in every pull apart in the Midwest. One of those was for the seat mounters, our, our first car for the seat mounter spreaders, we ran quarter inch plate from the transmission tunnel to the sill about three inches wide front and rear. No welding, lots of spread, lots of weight. Mm-hmm. And the Corvette question garnered Ooh, lots of Corvette input, apparently. Magazine. Corvette yep. magazine. The good Wakeman said, LS swap. No, well, sorry, wrong episode. Uh, and he, uh, he knows, not doing another one of those damn things. And some of the more destructive <laughs> concepts were like Tim Burr said, hey, could be the first century of its kind in the sportsman class of a Baja race? Because don't lie, everyone wants to do a Baja race. And Tim's like not wrong. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Dr. Florida Man loves correcting us. Not only did he correct us about the ECU PCM debacle, which we're refusing to acknowledge, but he also suggested to Mental that his assertion that the 1984 model was the first C4. Apparently, there were some 83 C4s, and all of them were sacrificed for crash testing. I don't think that counts. It didn't sell any 83 yeah, C4s. Yeah, so yeah, we don't care. Uh, There's also, one left, yeah. and GM yeah. has it. He also <laughs> offered a more pleasant pleasant retirement environment for than the northeast should it need a home in his garage there seemed to be a wave of folks wanting to off-road it al jones said in the regards to the corvette it's it's the rare instance that being neither hella sweet or but terrible it's but sweet just bad enough to be good if i were if i were you i'd consider making it a hoop dx there just happens to be an event in eastern pa in september al explained hoop dx is for those who do not know uh, basically, it's Lemon's version of Rally X Racing. All right. Sounds if you're going to hoop the X anything, we should do the Citroën. Because hey, it does have the drive. suspension for it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sure. Seriously, Except we, I we, just want to drive. No, mm -mm. don't get ideas. No. It's no, going no, no. away. No. Oh, so. absolutely. But it it did do a great job over the curves when you're on track. Like you could hit any curve and it would just and you almost didn't feel it as it's smooth <laughs> so you're, French. So your rhyme. French ladies in the background in the back seat could not spill their drinks. I think they know exactly. Right. If they spilled their martinis, then that'd be a problem. <laughs> <It'd> be a <laughs> problem. <laughs> now, since the discussion seems to center around off-road or radwood, so I reached out to our resident rad expert bradley brownell and he responded uh quote i am always in favor of saving c4s even the bad ones and then he sent me this picture which launched me down this entire rabbit hole about the corvette challenge race series in the 80s because they were banned from showroom stock racing because they were too good so they started their own series uh and he offered a second life solution for the corvette after the radwood shows and that is yank the current power plant drop in a cheap small block with a 383 to four barrel carb stroke it out and then you've got a real track car which you two absolutely do not need so again i am offering my rust free location should you wish to have a track car on the west coast and since we already have i was gonna say that we, we have access you to like there. four of them right there's a, a solstice out there oh yeah no the solstice hey, is you got there. cars actually actually the solstice is hurting a little bit right now but they're working on it oh don't worry um, and Corey cars has cars about 27 hers. cars that he's always yeah. like, somebody's got to drive them. Come on. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I want to share the screen real quick because this is actually a kind of cool looking. And, uh, and this was um, one of the Corvette challenge cars that was available in that series. So it, now it, it was a little bit newer than your version of it, but it's still uh, an early C4. Yeah. I'm trying to describe it, it for is, our listeners. It early silver C4. Blue and red stripes, number 97, giant mobile one logo. And Goodyear good year logos. because, you know, that was the tire. It's got some five-star mm -hmm. wheels that look pretty good. Damn, I mean, it looks yeah, like it an was, 80s uh, it was, Corvette it was race car. Series. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It was, it was, it was cool. So uh, just just options, uh, you know, to give the thing a bit of a, a, an opportunity for at least a proper Viking funeral. Yeah. Going to get it running. Go to Radwood. Going to be going to Lemon's <laughs> Rally and sell it that'll be good there we go there we go good okay. plan and uh in in the arena of not vet discussion uncle dave said hey this show is only an hour and 20 minutes what am i going to do with myself this is while he was plowing the sparking lot of the school he works at again uh he says in snowy season he's longer shows and i said well no, you didn't have no. to listen to the last one all the way through <laughs> so quickly no. there's more I'll... no yep. we don't we hour and 20 is perfect just right all right, so we did some eye racing with the Lemons folks. Fundoro at Altland, Al, Alton. Alton, Alton Park. Thank Alton. you. Whew, stuck in my throat. It's an old English circle with lots of elevation changes. That is actually quite a fun place, despite three you're too fast black flag penalties. Matt Prolescent crossed the line first in his Audi RS3, but arbitrarily we decided the real winners were sixth and ninth. Nice. And this Sunday, the circus will be running the trash sprints at Oxford Plains and Irwindale. What's Oxford third. Plains? I don't know what that is. A third oval, third mile paved oval. Oh. So basically you never stop turning left. Yes. Is what it is. You don't even get the little kind of straight. Nope. You just turn. Is that left. the one that we did that I was like, this is really no, that was like dirt. one drift. That was dirt. And, uh, this is paved. 
No, yeah, we did like a real pad, short basic. paved back that, in the day. I don't remember. Go on. But uh, I think that one was actually Thompson, one of the early versions of the Thompsons that we did back in the day. Uh, number six was actually Shalavine, who has built this season of iRacing, and ninth was Jared Duclos. Oh, excellent. Oh, Good thanks for, for looking that up. Appreciate it. All right, mm -hmm. let's talk about the E1R race. I down and forgot to put it in the show notes. <laughs> no problem. No, normally we don't remember. So we always say, do we remember who it was? Yeah, that guy in the middle. Yeah, I don't remember at all. Okay, let's talk to E1R race. We were going to prep for lemons with Oxford, but instead we went to Barber. Well, they did. I was not there at all. Uh, I was told that they had a great time. Almost 20 participants for both races. First was our favorite skippies with the other free cars and a single Pro 2 truck. Did anybody see Some guy, it? one jerk I in a Pro 2 truck just rolling over everybody. Yeah. Just, just one truck. <laughs> I did, not come in, I did not come in last. That's good. And it's great seeing the truck rolling down the back straight, or not, not terrible. down the back straight, next to the back straight at 100 miles an hour. And, <laughs> and if you're in a skippy, that, yeah. you're terrified because not, even Mustangs look bigger, big next to a, a skippy. Yeah. I'm staring at the lower lettering of his tires. And Completely. I'm yelling, I'm yelling into the Discord, Chris, don't you do it. Don't you burn. Right? You're like, the lug nuts are like next to your head. You're like, I'm going to die. Anyway, it's okay, like the, let's. It's like the NSX and a Camry. Uh, yes, or a or a lowered Miata, not different. Same <laughs> yeah. same thing. We, we almost yep. got run off the road in a lowered Miata. Anyway, uh, second race was all the fun cars, Dolores, GT3 cars, Radicals. It's not really racing, but it's so much fun. So our U1R league is on Mondays at 9 and 10 Eastern. It's password protected. You probably know what it is. And if you don't know, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll hook you up. Uh, don't forget, it's also got a Discord link. And you know who I keep looking for in the Discord and I never see? Yeah. Chrissy's mom. She doesn't have a Discord, but maybe I, we can hook her I'm just up. Saying. She might, she might, she doesn't you, offend easily, but sometimes it's a little <laughs> Yeah, you're right. It's a little, messy. It's a little, little, little blue in the Discord link. Cool. I just want to open up my Discord link and say, hi, Chrissy's mom. Yes. Yeah, Jeff, you enjoyed some Chrissy's mom's baked goods. I did. I did. The, the cinnamon things. What were cinnamon what things? They cinnamon went bar the things? Squares. Yeah. yeah. Squares. Yeah, cinnamon they, squares, man. They were Chris, on point. Chris nicely shared them with you guys, but. <laughs> Jim left me one corner of one bar on Sunday. Well, he ate my he ate my peach rings the other week too. So I think only half of them and left the bag open on the yes. counter all the rest of the yes. weekend. They yeah, got all hard anyway. <laughs> May topic time. What are we talking about? Seats. We're still talking about seats because you've still got a butt. It's got to have a place to go in a race car. Uh, and, if you're and a new Bill, listener, when I saw him mm -hmm. picking up the Sorry, Bill, when I saw him picking up the stuff, he was like, man, you guys ended about seats. I wanted to hear more. Like, now I'm sitting waiting. Like, what else do I do with this seat? <laughs> yes. And that's an excellent point. If, if Dear listener, if you are new, uh, listen, this is your first episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. But if you're trying to get some tech information, I'm going to ask you to stop and go back to listen to last week's episode. Because we are talking about race seats. Uh, we discussed last week's sanctioning rules, things you're going to need, materials, we reviewed the basic design, ratings, sizes, fitment, and then we wrapped the whole discussion up with a discussion about sliders, mounts, brackets, and installation hardware. Now, this week's topic is going to be all about how to get that into the car safely and effectively, or if you're Chrissy, doing that about four or five times. Now, it seems straightforward, but it is going to require some planning and forethought. And as we mentioned, just get comfortable with the idea that you're going to do this many, many, many times. Same with engine swaps. It's not going in the first time. So in and out of the car about 20 times, which you, need, you have a race cage, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Check your rules for your series, and then check them again as we primarily race lemons. We're going to focus on their rules just as an exemplar. It's all right. You bought your seat. You picked your seat based on last week's advice and you you took all the crap out of your car and you got a hole in your car and you're just going to bolt it right in, right? Sure. If you suck and you don't actually want to be comfortable or reach anything in the cockpit, you could just bolt that seat right in. But we're going to talk about doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We mentioned last week about the shape of the seat and hopefully it fits your hole because you did all the measurements and it probably will, but spoiler alert, it doesn't matter how many times you measured, nothing fits in that Miata. So, but I <laughs> want to talk about the Miata because it's a great case to understand fit in the hole. Okay. So the hole in a Miata is a trapezoid. If you look down from above, the small side is towards the trunk. 
And if you look across the, like, you know, from the pedal box backwards, it is also a trapezoid because the bottom, like near the pan of the car, near the ground, is smaller than the top. So it's kind of like, it, it's trapezoid. I don't know how to say it. It's a, it's a box that is bigger on top and in the front than it is in the back. So, you know, whatever you did, that hole is very bizarre. And all the holes in all the cars are different, okay? There's, large, there's a large brace in a Miata that holds the front of the seat up. So just because you measured and you stick it in, it might not be in the right spot. And this is what I'm talking about. You may need to, no scratch that, you probably will need to work on the car itself. There's bumps, there's ridges in the body, there's flat floors, people have angle floors. So you're going to need to massage the floor plan to get th the floor pan to get things right. Bumps can be flattened down with a hammer. Braces can be cut out. Please rebrace things to keep it from wobbling. Um, we've used blocks of wood. Have we ever used blocks of wood? No, we usually use steel. Um, but uh, we've we've used blocks of wood. And we still use wood. Sorry, I, we I was... use wood because wood is great to hammer against. Yes, it's true. And it's a little softer, helps, but it's it's nice. We've done it with like jacks and stuff. So you like you know you got to push the bottom you up, the, you jack yeah, up, you put the you get wood like... on the jack and jack up, and that holds it steady. And then you hammer it, or and then you hammer it, have, or yeah, sometimes you just dudes. get like three four hundred pound dudes and jump in the car, and that kind of helps crush it a little. So yeah, so you got to massage your floor plans. You just don't throw it in there. You know what I mean? Um, because you might not find that it sits how and where you expect it to. Uh, most Miata people will cut out like triangles from the transmission tunnel to make it more square than trapezoid. This is kind of like advanced tech. But if you want to, you can Google that and see how that is. I did it for my Miata. It got the seat a lot lower. Um, so anyway. So installing a seat is not just where you put it, but it's also to ensure you have the correct angle and the spec and the distance from your harness bar, because that is all dictated in the rules. Uh, a slight recline is a good idea as it will keep you from sliding into the anti-submarine belt. That's the one that goes right near three out of four of our testicles. Um, I'm sorry, I should say that. Who we don't three? have four testicles. Three out of four of us on this podcast has <laughs> testicles. Like, that's a mess. Sorry. I, I was like, like who's missing I, some? I started the sentence. Right, this... <laughs> it didn't land right. Don't worry. I have another joke. Like, does everybody up. only have I one because their better. wives hold the other one? So I was like, where are we going with this? I, I don't know. I'm um, I'm alarmed. It is just this disregard for that fourth testicle. Screw you, fourth testicle. You go anywhere. <sighs> I could see I'm in there already. But anyway, like seriously, that one. if if you don't have an ankle in your seat, your butt is going to slide forward every time you hit the brakes. We've been in cars that push yes. your head down like an impatient lover, okay? You have to have an angle back. And I'm just going to tell you that, that you know, you got to the the Hans device is going to be there, your helmet is going to be there. So you need to do more than just check this with your street clothes on okay so anyway so you can use tubing and things to get to get the you know to bring the front of the seat up if you don't have the right kind of floor shape um if you have the front hump sometimes you can use it uh but you know sometimes it's easier to flatten the back to raise the front but you know like i said you're going to put the seat in you're going to massage the floor you're going to take the seat out mess up you put the seat in check it again check it again check it again check it again and you're going to have to do this with your sliders on whatever brackets that you're going to bolt it in all of those have to be in and you're going to be test fitting to make sure that you can reach all the major controls and that it feels comfortable okay because you cannot move with your the gloves. steering with your gloves eh, gloves you know they don't really move stuff but you but have to be able you, to reach things. If can you, you reach can't, third? You can't. You can't, you can't move can you reach, the shifter. Yes. You can't move the pedals. Now, if you can't see a gauge or if you can't grab the fire handle, you might be able to move those. But you really shouldn't have built those until you had the seat in position because the seat being the driver's position has to be set first so that you can build the things around it including the cage. So you can't build a cage and then say, oh, no, I'll put the seat in. You know, you really have to be doing these in conjunction. So, yes, but you'll never move the steering wheel. You'll never move the pedals. You'll never move the shifter. You need to make sure you could reach all of those things 
with your helmet on, with your gloves, yes, mental, with your Hans device, because, and you know, we, we've given Chris crap and he has defended his seating position for a little while, but at one point we had a Honda that was uncomfortable for me to drive. I'll say that because the angle of the seat pushed my head, uh, Forward. That wasn't the only thing that was the problem with the it's Honda. It's true, seat. but but I but but changing the angle of that seat made that car it did help. so much better to drive. It did. Except then you couldn't reach it, the wheel and I could reach the wheel. Well. <laughs> it didn't reach well, everybody. And, and, but that does that speaks to, to to everything that we're talking about on there is uh the Honda was an evolution. And, you know, so this change, this change, this change, this change, this change. And it was always, we're having to adjust a lot of that stuff. And I think that's how a lot of that Honda seating ended up the way it was. And then when that, the new gauge cluster came in there, that allowed us, us, Chris, the opportunity to address the seat. That was mostly because and the new shifter. I just bought a new seat and redid it. And that was <laughs> You're going to redo it. That's fair, really fair, what fair. it is. You guys, Chrissy, you're you're, you're listening to this so you can learn from our mistakes and we've made it's most true. of them. Make sure you ever all your drivers can reach third, because when mm. it goes away, you can't always get it back. <laughs> Ask me how string. I know. Ask me how I know. Uh, okay, so there's more than just filling the hole in the car and having some recline. Uh, here are some other factors to consider. So the seatbelt angle for the shoulder belts, you need to have the belts come over the driver's shoulders and hit the harness bar at an angle from zero to 15 degrees. And I suggest you measure it, or at least if you're really good at measuring, uh, having some idea of what the, what the percentages are, because go ahead. Yes. 15 degrees down. That's very important. Down. I'm sorry. Not, not up. You just didn't, didn't specify. I didn't finish. No, I'm sorry. Zero degree, zero to 15 degrees down. Yes. Measure it, figure it out. Make sure you look at it uh, so that the height works for to, so that your height works for this. Or you'll need to add another uh, seat with harness bar from the cage right at the at the at, right at the height that's the correct height. Uh, this is more work and pretty annoying. So just me measure before you start it. All right. So on the lap belts, you're going to have the lap belts mount back at the seat holes at a 45 degree angle. So they're going to be behind the driver's seat at a 45 degree. Lastly, you need the seat, seat the sub belts uh, to mount slightly behind the hole in the seat at the furthest rear position. And make sure you measure that as well. And this is why, this is my proportion because this is what I did all weekend. Back forth, back forth, <laughs> up down, up down. Oh wait, it's wrong, it's too short now. Jim, get in, Jim, get out, Jim, get in. Does this work? Where's it on you? Nope, too high, too low, too high, too low. So this is what I did all weekend. Um, all right, so make sure that they're right. Go ahead. Yes, Mantel. Well, I was going to say, and this was you putting in the race seat into your how manyth race car that you have built? Oh, well, seven. They're six. not all of ours, yeah. but a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it it changes every time, and this is what I said. I was telling Chris, I was like, I've done mm -hmm. this. Why is this so this hard? And I said, why? You know, no. My bigger question was, why is the sub belt from the Honda so different in the the Z? And because I said they're all the same, basically the same drivers. Why should it be that different? Because you have to adjust the sub belt before you put it in the car. Because once you put it in the car, you can't reach it anymore because there's things in the way. And ask me why my arms are all cut up because I shoved my arm under the seat so many times. So you can only do it so many times. And when you get it done, you bolt the seat down. I'm sorry, this is off, off, off. Uh, notes. Um, but once you put the seat down, you can't move, you can't adjust how long the sub belt is naturally, because you shouldn't be able to do that from the top of the car. It should be stationary one place. It's going to, it's going to stay there forever. Um, so make sure that that's correct. Um, and it's because the seating position is very different in the Honda as it is in the Z, because that's just where, how the seat fits in the car, where the, where everything is, everything that just Jeff just talked about. So all of that's different. Make sure it's, you try multiple drivers, bigger, smaller, all those. Okay. I'll some some those. seats you can reach in and unclip the sub belt, but that's not sure. what's going on in our Z at the moment. Now the old Wago van we could, because that yeah. was a super tall wagon. And so the seat wasn't mounted right basically to the floor. Yeah. The Z is a low sports sporty car. So the seat is as low as we can possibly make it because we have some tall friends. Yeah. The S10s, I could reach my hand <laughs> under the seat and mm -hmm. unclip the seat. Yes. 
This you absolutely this cannot. You cannot. Nope. There's the Honda you could not either. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, and then you have to undo the whole seat to figure out the seat from the mount to get to the belt belts. Okay, moving on. Uh, you need to get the driver as far away from the cage as you can. So when you're putting this, we're back to where you're mounting the seat and the belts. Um, so this means pushing the seat as close to the center con center of the car as you reasonably can without getting too far out of the alignment with control. So you don't wanna be like in the center of the car, but you need to be over as far as you can to not feel like your, your steering wheel is over to your, to your right and you are completely over to the left, but you really need to make sure that you're over um, into basically the, the center channel as you can. Um, and you need to make sure the seat is low as possible in smaller cars if you have taller drivers, because uh, especially you might wanna consider even mounting it right to the floor it's the only way to fit tall people in little cars sometimes so it's the way my miata is there there's no sliders they the kirky is right to the floor mm -hmm. yep. you know how we feel about kirkies yes Some well that's good. not a, Some that's, not a <laughs> that's not a long distance car that's a track day car no. yeah anyway let's talk about mounting points I, th I think we actually got a little ahead of ourselves here um let's get back to basics an ideal start is mounting the seat to your stock sliders and having your stock sliders mount to the stock location. If you can make this work and get the height you need and the right location, fantastic. That is the ideal solution. Go do that. Has that not, occurred in any race car we have ever owned ever? Both Hondas and the S10s. Really? All had stock sliders and stock locations that mm. I made work with the seats. Mm. That's all. Not anything that the three pedal mafia has run, but a friend of mine had an infinity in Oklahoma and he mounted the, the Sparco side mounts that we recommended to the electric automatic sliders of the J30. And it was great because when you turn the car off, it had the automatic recline. So it was easier to get out of the car. <laughs> so the belts would just loosen as you shut the car off. It was, uh, it was pretty. Scary. Colin Chapman yeah. is rolling in his grave right now yeah. going, what in the hell is going on out there? Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Yeah, Darren's 124 Mercedes also had the seat mounted to the power seat switches. <laughs> so you could, you'd actually have the switches around the console. So you could adjust your seat. If you wanted to like snug the belts yeah. up a little bit, you snug oh, them yeah. up. With the seat there. <laughs> Actually, the Citroen, we used the stock Citroen seat mounts too, because they were a flat mount on the bottom. So who knows? Um, anyway, go do that. If if that does not gonna work, let's talk about other stuff. Now, Jeff talked about making the floor flat. You are gonna need to do this to start with for the most part. If you're if you're using hard mount seats or if you're using a flat slider like the Jeep TJ or the Volvo 240 or the apparently the passenger side of an F body. Um Whatever you use though, it's gotta be sturdy. So you need to start with something sturdy and something that's flat side to side, because, you know, however you're gonna do that, whether it's flattening the floor, whether it's making a, a brace that, that goes across that's flat, something's gotta make it flat. Um, a random spot on the floor that you're drilling through probably isn't all that sturdy, especially if your car is on the rusty side and <laughs> especially if it's you know thin economy car sheet metal. You know, you're, your Chevette wasn't built with sturdiness in mind. Yeah, your hot, your uh, Miata is made out of tin foil, everybody. Right, exactly. So for these, you might want to consider weld-in brackets or braces or just plate in the area where you're actually going to mount the seat through the floor. It's a very use though. At least use big backing plates, big washers, like bigger than washers even. I don't think washers are big enough even for this. You want like a plate to get to the whole thing, to really get that whole floor incorporated. Because if the floor melts, no, it melts, bends. If it melts, you have other problems. If it bends. <laughs> Dude, you better start over. Yeah. You didn't mix your A and B correctly. No, no. <laughs> if it bends, your seat is now in the wrong place. And therefore, your belts might not be holding you. So make it sturdy. Um, and consider uh, consider some welding brackets in, in areas where you actually mount the seat through the floor. We talked about that. Um, and also use quality hardware. Don't use the silver stuff at Home Depot. Get proper either grade eight if it's SAE or 10.9 if it's metric. Use the right stuff, all right? And especially locking hardware also helps or safety wire, all those things. Great to do to make sure it doesn't back out. Mental. And if you don't, if, if you Home Depot, uh, just because the way they're, if you're looking for good quality hardware, I know in a lot of places in the Midwest and the Southeast, we have tractor supply and they do sell grade eight 
hardware. And you guys have mentioned a place, uh, a, a series of places near you guys that do sell that. Well, Lowe's does. Yeah, uh, Lowe's does. Um, I go to Lowe's. Fa Fastenal, also a good place for bolts. There we go. Yes. All right. If you still have a weak floor or you just want the best possible mounts, consider adding some bars from the sill bar of your cage horizontally across your car to some plates that are welded on the trans tunnel. These can be round or square. That's fine either way. Um, but you can then weld tabs directly to those bars and have a very sturdy seat mounted cage. Yeah. I'm a it's big gonna... fan of just getting some, having square stock and just building what you need to build. You know, if you gotta, if you gotta cut a brace, put a piece of square stock from the sill to the I mean, trans tunnel. You can use roll cage tubing. Yeah. You can Absolutely. use like th that yeah. door bar that, that you bent wrong. Mm -hmm. It's got to bend at the end that could be bend it right off the bottom and then it goes flat across and weld it to a plate on the trans tunnel. Do two of those. You're never going to get sturdier than that That's and good. weld up tabs to them. It, it's a little higher up is a problem. So that doesn't get you quite as low, but it is, there's nothing sturdier. So consider that depending on your, your car and your risk tolerance. Um, just Jeff also talked about the angle of the seat for recline. We also suggest putting the sliders themselves on a downward slope front to rear. The reason is that when your shorter drivers pull their seat forward, they're also going to go up so they can see a little better. Taller drivers, seat all the way back, well, that seat's going to be as low as it's going to go. So that's going to get them the maximum headroom that they probably need. And you can go pretty steeply on the, the rake there. You'd be surprised at how much you can add and uh, it'll be helpful. The other benefit is it's really easy to slide back. <laughs> and yes, it's, not, it's really hard to slide forward when it's like that. Well, look, no matter what, you're going to need some seat mount brackets. And we discussed last time the L-shaped bracket with the mounting holes on the sides. If you're mounting directly to the floor, then get the seat placed exactly where you need it, as what we talked about before. And then mark it, drill it, bolt it. All right. It's pretty obvious at that point. You shouldn't need our help too much, but odds are that you're probably going to use sliders if you're an endurance racer like us. So first you'll need to mount the sliders to the car. In doing this, you're going to need to consider everything that we just said above about mounting position. Uh, try to have the sliders more or less centered under the seat. Uh, we talked about the TJ sliders. Uh, you don't really need this advice if you're using the stock sliders or no sliders, but uh, the TJ sliders have uh, eight mounting studs on the bottom. So you get the slider square to the floor, you mount it through the floor or whatever fr brackets or tabs you've made and whatever it is, just, just make it sturdy. If you don't keep the slider square, then the seat won't slide well because, hey, there's no give. The left side of the seat needs to be in the same place as the right side of the seat, no matter where it goes forward or backwards. Okay, that's pretty obvious, but you'll 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 not think about it, and then all of a sudden you'll say, "Why is it the seat sliding?" So, um, for example, on the Z, we welded small tabs to the stock seat mounting reinforcement beam. That was that thing I talked about in the Miata. And it runs on the inside of the car. And then we drilled the holes in those. And then in the rear, we drilled right through the floor and used really long bolts in the sliders to go through the large mount reinforcement plates. So under the car, we had the big old plates and the bolt went through the TJ sliders, through the floor, through the plates. All right sandwich 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 think about that um i lost my pace for the passenger seat in the civic we welded angle iron across the same part portion of the front as it was uneven uh we, with holes in the front of the mounts so at the rear we made a bracket that bolted into the stock mounting points and used angle iron and flat stock with tabs to hold the rear mounting points this probably needs to be visual we need some pictures with this one I'll, I'll do my whiteboard next time. I'll go totally uh, instructor on everybody. The whole point is front higher than back. Get it level left to right at the front. Get it level left to right at the back. Get some holes in it and, and yeah. make it sturdy. And if you have a unibody car, you probably have that hump in the front of the seat for the same reason, because the stock seats and the stock sliders wanted to be angled to the back. Yeah, but and so use that. Anytime use you can it. use Absolutely. something OEM that's safety related, 
use it, that they're better than you are at this stuff. Yes. Lots right? of engineers and lots of crashing and lots of really, really you smart people. You and your stick welder are not the NHTSA. <laughs> okay. and, and they probably have threaded holes in it. Yes. And if you took out your seat, you probably have bolts that fit in it really well that are also crash tested and really strong and really big. So absolutely, especially the front of the Miata, like we made fun of that hump, but it puts a threaded hole exactly where you want it. And add some strength to your floor plan across it. Absolutely. It's a brace. Yes. So you're on the second episode. Your sliders are mounted. Your seat has brackets bolted to it. Now you've got to attach the seat bracket to the sliders. Now, depending on the width, you might be able to just slap those brackets right on top of the sliders and weld them right up. Of course, after you clean the paint off in the right spots, but you might also be able to bolt the sliders to the brackets with the right spacing. Understand that's going to add weight. So in a sports car, probably something else to try. If none of this is going to add height, not gonna, weight metal height, height. I'm sorry. Critical point. You, you wrote height and I still said weight, even though I told myself not to do that. <laughs> it's going to add height. And even on a hard roof car, you don't have a convertible like a Miata or a T-top. Uh, if the helmet goes above the halo bar and they may not test this when you're going through tech, I have seen a car that landed on its roof, ground through the roof and started grinding through a helmet. Now the, the driver was okay, but they saw the top of their helmet and freaked out a little bit. Make sure you're, you're passing that broomstick test. Now, depending on the width, you might be able to just, uh, or sorry, you might be able to just weld, bolt that up. Now, if none of that works, you're going to need to modify your brackets or your sliders to get things to line up, or in many cases, both. Some suggestions are welding some flat, I'm sorry, some angle iron to the sides of the sliders to give them more width or some flat stock or angle iron to the left and right of the sliders and then weld these to the sliders and the brackets. So you're adding or subtracting space to make sure that everything is staying flat and square. Either way, Chris and Jeff and Chrissy all touched on this. This is not where you're trying to save weight. This is not the windshield wiper motor is six pounds. Build it hard and sturdy. You are going to be taking the seat itself in and out several times as the sole goes on. And every time you weld or mark, make sure you've got the seat actually bolted in place firmly so that the mounting holes are exactly in the right places when it's finally time to put the seat in for the last time. Cause there are a few things in this world as frustrating as getting the seat bolted. And then the last bolt is just a degree off and you can't make it work without cross threading it. Cause then you got to take the whole thing out and start beating on stuff to make it bend and work. Never done that one before, have you? Nope. Didn't come from experience. Nope, all. never does. <laughs> when no, you get that no. mad and you're like, it's so frustrating. Yes, I completely when, understand. It's when you get the drill out and just start hogging it out. Well, you do, I don't, I, because I, then I'm going to get in trouble if I do. Yeah. Hello? I'm, I'm with Chrissy, you know, Chris, Chris, yeah, you're, you're, you're make the whole bigger. And I'm, I am, I am manipulate metal into compliance with rage. And you were like, this is fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You can get a little bit, you can get away with it a little bit better than I can. Chris is like, what's wrong? And I'm like, just <laughs> fix this bolt. And I'm like, and he just does it. And I'm like, I, was <laughs> I just cut, I just cut shit and get crap later. Jeff, why'd you make the hole so damn big? <laughs> yeah, we're all of this. We're, like, we're losing all over the place. All of these things. Anyway, back to seats. Back to seats. Okay, we're getting ready to let's install this new seat. We've done so much work already. Let's install this. Okay, when you're finalizing your brackets, your sliders, you're bolting everything down, your seat will be out of the car, right? So you're going to try to put all this stuff together. Once you're completely sure that everything's secured, painted, sliders are lubricated, uh, then you are ready to put the seat in as simply as sliding it between the brackets and bolting it in with the high quality bolts that you bought from the last episode. Make sure that you have an, an, your, your anti-submarine, your sub belt sub uh, in place and thread it through the center. You have to figure out, I'm going off kilter here, um, figure out where the how you can slide your seat belt in, right? So you probably have to do it from the top. So make sure that could the, because the uh, mechanism on the sub belt is bigger than the hole is usually. Mm -hmm. yep, so you yep, have yep. to make sure that you put that in first and then put the seat in because you can't go, you can't put the seat belt in and then thread it through the top. Depends on 
how big the hole is and all that good stuff. But make sure you do that before you bolt it in because again, like I said before, I dealt with all of this and it just, it just makes you mad. Anyway, so um, it is, in the, it's nearly entice, it, and it's also impossible to, ma to make sure, I mean, this is back to like a belts episode, make sure that your belts are in correctly on the loop or however they're supposed to be bolted in before you bolt the seat in. Let's do, let's talk about that as well. Um, so uh, yeah, adjustment is just terrible and make sure it's all ready. And um, yeah, so make sure that every, all of the, everything is the way you want it, test fit it multiple times before you bolt the seat in, then install your seat, and then, then hopefully you only do this once. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Cause I did it three times this weekend. Awesome, Maybe does anyone weekend. have anything else to say on the topic of seats before we move on to our final segment? All right. Final segment time. Somebody's got some, a question for the listeners. I have a quick question. I need to buy a new helmet. When I was trying helmets on at a, at a uh, gear place, it was a pit race. I had a trailer with stuff. <clears throat> the two that fit me best were black armor and RI black armor was notably cheaper and had communications options. So I was going to go with that. Their website doesn't seem to have anything on it. And I emailed them a while ago. I haven't heard anything back. Does anybody know anything about what's going on at Black Armor? Are they still existing? Do they sell anything? Does anybody know? If anybody has any clues, let me know because I'd like to buy their stuff. They're not making it easy, which is kind of a shame. I really don't want to go spend a thousand dollars on an RI that has no comms and stuff and then just have to drill it and do stuff like it with my $300 pyrotech. So that's all. If anybody knows anything about Black Armor, let me know. Heard really good things about the Arai. Yeah, the Arai's, well, they're great. Yeah. I just they don't come with the, the communication the package. I don't. So I'd, I'm just be doing the same damn thing I have now with my old Pyrotech and wear earbuds and drill the harness oh, yeah, in dude. and stick it in with tape oh, and. Built in com. I know, built but a root doesn't, doesn't fit my right, head, yeah. and a Stilo right. isn't that Stilo doesn't fit very well no, no. either. So I'm trying to find the good comfort one that has all the options. I didn't realize uh, Black Armor had gone dark. I actually know some people that were quasi sponsored by them, and I will uh, re and we will have an update on the next show because the other good thing about Black Armor is they were made in America. Yeah, America. So that's what I was asking. If anybody out there knows, I would like to find out more because I want to buy something. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Anyway. Uh, it is Thursday. What is it? Twenty fourth. 24th of February? Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday? Exactly. Sorry, Wednesday the 24th. Uh, and all of the news of world is a Twitter. In case you haven't heard, Tiger Woods crashed a brand new Genesis SUV and nearly died. So he was leaving his charity golf tournament sponsored by Genesis in his courtesy Genesis GV80. And it is on every single news station everywhere. I had no idea Genesis even had an SUV. By the way, it's kind of sexy. Oh, it's a, Supposedly it's quite it good. Is a highly, it's everything I've heard. Oh, it's quite good. oh not only do you see this interior, is, Chrissy. I don't know about that. That good. grill, though. I need a the different grill. The grill's a little ostentatious, but, but it's uh, just a little. It's, it's kind of oh, the interior. But it's, but, but it, it drives great. Fantastic. It drives great. Everyone Ooh. loves it. It is everything that is lovely. When car show season starts again, expect all of us to get to the pre-licked cars and sit in those, sit in one of those <laughs> as soon as possible. And we and we've always liked the Genesis to sit in the Genesis because they're just yes. lovely yeah. cars. They're comfortable. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So before I get to the question, I want to say get well soon, Tiger. I don't understand why people watch golf, but I know you're the goat. Is this Hella sweet or butt terrible for Genesis that their name is plastered all over everything, the Ooh. tournament, the accident, everything. And by the way, it looks like this might be the end of Tiger's career because he is really messed up. Jaws of life, fib tib fracture. Can, I, can, you, can you tell me, this is a, a preemptive question because it sounds like you know more about the situation than I do because I don't know about the situation. What do, what happened? Like what, was he just like on an on-ramp? and he just, just like went around car? a corner too fast yes. basically yes. and slid Driving off the road while too angry fast. is the current, uh, it was like okay. nine in the morning. And, yeah, uh, so no, and, and apparently situations, like it, it, went, dry. it went end over end yeah. and fell no, down a 450 foot embankment. Yeah, no expected alcohol, no expected. Anything. Right. I heard just, that, but there's nothing, but it was dry. Like just, yeah. just like a bad yeah. turn kind of yeah. thing. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, there wow. is some discussion that he was very angry and driving at a very high rate of speed. Oh, uh, okay. So, but I don't, I, that is pure conjecture. I have sure. none of those facts. That's fine. I just wasn't, wasn't sure if you knew more about it than I do. Mental All right. is first. Hella sweet or but terrible mental. What do you think? It depends on whether or not he recovers. If, even if he's not competitive, if he picks up a golf club again, Genesis will be like, ah, we're the vehicle that saved Tiger Woods. They are saying it is lucky he is alive. Facts. Yeah, well, I'm, maybe I'm that's... with mental. Yeah, I'm with mental. It, he didn't die. It was apparently a pretty horrific kind of incident. Like he went down a cliff, right? The mm -hmm. car looks pretty decent considering how bad. Oh, this there's was. there's footage of of the. Yes, there's I was able to tell exactly what car it was. Yes. And how many times have all of the news medias said Genesis for a brand that doesn't have great brand recognition? That's exactly what you. I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. Now everyone's like, what the hell is a Genesis? Tiger Woods we driving? literally all just he Googled and posted that picture of what the car looked like. I don't know what the car <laughs> yeah. looked like. And and we all went, ooh, that's pretty. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, not, that's not bad. Not, not only is it like we're all Googling Genesis, but... Here, I'll, I'll bring the picture up for those of us who are on YouTube. You. Uh, it says oh, Genesis okay, right on the side, like Genesis tournament. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like so brand the end, branded. The front end got pulled pretty hard, but look look at the panel roof intact. Oh, wow. You're right. I completely missed that. Right? It did not even crack the glass. And I all bet the that side airbags are gone. Yeah, the, that well, front the windshield think, was done they, by the rescue. Yeah, but Maybe. all the rest of the glass intact side wow. airbags have gone off you know the front disintegrated because it's supposed to it's called a crumple zone that's why yeah. it does it um but the I mean, structure is picture there. and i'm sorry we're doing bad pod but yeah look up this is we're looking at foxbusiness.com tiger woods was driving a genesis and yeah it's Angeles all over driving. the internet you can't I, miss yeah finding <clears throat> if you just care to look at yeah. it because i just hadn't but um that just doesn't look like a bad crash from those car pictures i mean i'm sure it was if you rolled Tumbled down, down it and yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah the yeah, safety yeah. the safety structure of the car around the passenger compartment held up i mean the rest of it is supposed to give way that's the point yeah so yeah car died i'm, I'm going with him. a hella sweet for the company too i had no idea genesis was making a car and i do a car podcast or making a truck <laughs> and i yeah, do a car yeah, podcast yeah. so <laughs> And I'm shopping Fair. for a new car. So I get like ads delivered to me all the time. Like every time I'm on Facebook, it's like women's lingerie car, women's lingerie, right? Car, women's lingerie right. Car, so. I wasn't going to bring it. I would I, I hate you that you brought that up by not me. I mean, it's, it's non gender specific. <laughs> that was a lingerie, private text yeah. message. <laughs> whatever, whatever you feel good in. And hey, there's man, no, we, no don't, we don't kink shame. We love you, Jeff. We no don't. We don't. We went over it Valentine's a couple Day, times. Everybody. Valentine's Day for everyone. Yeah. All right. So I got hella sweet from mental. I got hella sweet from Chris. Chrissy? I mean, uh, it, so we're, it's hella sweet for the brand? For the brand. We're talking yes. About? Yes. It is obviously not good for Tiger and we wish him yeah, well. Yeah. I'm yeah. I think it is. I, I agree. I mean, it's because people are talking about it. They don't necessarily realize what Genesis kind of, I think, rolls under the um, it's a Hyundai it's, it's manufacturer. Hard. Yeah. But no, no, I'm sorry. No, my, my point was, is it's, it's hard to identify from the road, right? So it's not one of those like flashy. It's kind of, it's a sedan. It's beautiful. It's nice, but it's sleek. It's like, oh, is that a Mercedes? No, it's not. I'm yeah. like, oh, it's gone now. I don't know what it is. So I think Genesis needs, need, doesn't need something like this, but needs to get in front of people more to know that it's, it's its own brand. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't necessarily think that people are like, well, what's what's a Genesis, right? Well, oh, I didn't realize they had this car. Or the, the things that we're talking about are making it so that we're talking about it and it saved his life. So yeah, I'm 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 uh, hell sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hell sweet too. A whole lot better than his last SUV crash. That's true. What was that? <laughs> All right, so we uh, before Jeff gets there because he's already busted we'll out. We'll explain it to you later, Chrissy. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, for our devoted listeners, well, basically Bill, Eric, Kurt, Chrissy's family, way back in our early episodes, think like the teen episodes, we fell in love with a team that was running a Maserati by turbo in the mid Midwest and Northeast champ races. We've been wanting to talk to these folks for years. We used to say, if this is you reach out and find us as luck would have it. The cars related to our guests from Apex adjacent. So the builder, owner, driver reached out to us, and he is even more interesting than you expect 
for a guy who races the 35 year old Maserati and entry level endurance racing. And we are really looking forward to having him on next week's episode. It's going to be great. Well, and his son is on a podcast and he's not been on his son's podcast. So, you know, anyway, thank you for downloading us. We hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of everyone racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing and building because everyone can be a racer. Even you, as long as you fit in the seat. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. Even if you hated us, tell us why. If you're watching on the YouTube, talk to us down there in the doodly-doo. Right down there. Just type right to it. Uh, If you have any show ideas or questions or you know where Black... What is it, Chris? What's the helmet company? Black Armor. Black Armor. Black Armor Armor Race, why their helmet is there. Hit us up on our Facebook page or Everyone Racers or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text us 484-243-0455. Find us on the Instagrams or the Twitters at Everyone Racers. We're officially on Spotify. Didn't know we weren't on Spotify. Recommend Bruce us to your Pem- Bruce Pempton us, yes. Oh, okay. Re- recommend us to your Spotify buddies. Thanks again, and until next week, keep that seat bolted down with the big old plates.